Hello, and welcome to this presentation using the Rodian Schwartz CTH radio test set. This video will introduce you to the CTH and show you how to perform various types of radio and radio related tests using the CTH. The CTH is designed to perform basic function and performance testing of both handheld and mobile radios. The unit is battery powered and rugged and is therefore suitable for both indoor and outdoor use. The CTH can make a variety of different measurements. These include measurements of transmit frequency, either directly connected or over the air, and measurement of both forward and reverse power, including a calculation of the resulting voltage standing wave ratio, or VISWAR. In addition, the CTH can generate an RF signal to test the receiver's sensitivity, or squelch, and finally, it can also be used as a cable tester for determining distance to fault or the length of cables used in a radio system. Some of the key specifications of the CTH include the frequency measurement range, the power measurement range, and the RF power output. The two models of the CTH have similar frequency ranges, 30 to 512 MHz for the CTH100A and 25 to 500 MHz for the CTH200A. The CTH is able to measure power in the range of 0.1 to 50 watts. The CTH's internal RF generator used in receiver testing can output power in the range of minus 97 to minus 120 dBm for frequencies below 100 megahertz and minus 111 to minus 134 dBm at higher frequencies. There are four basic controls on the CTH. To turn the CTH on, press and hold the enter on button. This button is also used to select menu items. The arrow or navigation keys are used to navigate through the menu choices and to change numerical values in the settings menus. To turn the CTH off or to go back one menu level, use the return off key. Lastly, the light button is used to enable and control the intensity of the CTH's built-in backlight. There are two BNC connectors on the top of the CTH. The radio connector is used to attach the CTH to the antenna connector of the radio under test. The antenna connector is used to connect to either an external antenna or dummy load or to a cable when running distance default or cable length tests. Although you can't see it in this picture, the CTH also has a built-in telescoping antenna for over-the-air measurements. The CTH is powered by three AA batteries. These can be either standard or rechargeable batteries. The status of the batteries is shown at startup. BAT OK means that the batteries have sufficient charge, whereas BAT low or BAT empty means that the batteries need to be replaced. A small blinking empty battery symbol indicates the battery should be replaced as soon as possible. The functions of the CTH are organized into so-called test modes. These are selected using the right and left navigation arrows and the enter key. The available test modes are transmitter test, receiver test, cable fault, which includes distance default and cable length, and over the air. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go over these test modes in detail. There's also a settings mode, which is used to configure the CTH settings, both for the instrument itself and for the different measurement modes. Let's start with transmitter test. Transmitter test consists of measurements of frequency, as well as both forward and reflected or reverse power. The CTH can also calculate and display voltage standing wave ratio, or VISWAR, from the measured values of forward and reflected power. Transmitter tests allow you to both verify the output power of the radio under test, as well as evaluate how well the transmitter and antenna are matched in terms of impedance. For the transmitter test, the CTH is connected between the radio and the antenna, or dummy load. Measurements are made automatically and continuously while the transmitter is being keyed. The transmitter test results include frequency, given in megahertz, as well as both forward and reflected power, in units of either dBm or watts. This can be changed using TX unit in the settings menu. Instead of reflected power, results can also be shown as VISWAR, or voltage standing wave ratio, by enabling TX VISWAR under settings. To start a transmitter test, connect the radio under test to the CTH radio connector and an antenna or dummy load to the CTH antenna connector. When the attached radio is keyed, frequency, forward power, and reverse power, or VISWAR, are automatically and continuously measured and displayed. The next test we'll look at is receiver test mode. 
When operating in receiver mode, the CTH tests the receiver portion of the radio. More specifically, the CTH can be used to test sensitivity, squelch, and demodulation. The CTH is connected to the antenna connector of the radio under test, and then generates a test signal. This signal can be a simple FM modulated tone, an unmodulated or CW carrier, or a recorded voice message. The transmit power and frequency must be configured, although frequency can be automatically configured by the CTH based on the last received transmission. Let's take a look at how this works. The radio under test is connected to the CTH radio connector and tuned to the desired frequency. When we enter RX test mode, we see the transmit frequency is set to our default of 25 MHz. After keying the attached radio, the CTH updates the transmit frequency, and when our radio switches back to receive, we can hear the received audio being transmitted on the correct frequency. Now let's look at cable fault mode. When a cable fault test is run, the CTH injects a signal into the cable under test. The CTH then analyzes the reflected signal to determine the cable length and or the location of faults along the cable. This is sometimes referred to as a distance default measurement. The CTH will also detect and display if no antenna is connected, or if there are no faults detected in the cable. To perform cable tests, the coaxial cable is connected to the CTH's antenna connector. In order to make cable fault measurements, two parameters must be configured. The first of these is L, the maximum length of the cable. This can be given in three steps, up to 120 meters, up to 240 meters, or up to 480 meters. Choosing the appropriate value for L improves measurement accuracy. Note also that faults beyond this configured distance cannot be located. The second mandatory parameter is velocity factor. This represents the speed of the signal through the cable under test, specified as a percentage of the speed of light in a vacuum. Velocity factor varies between cable types, so velocity factor must be given in order to convert time into the correct distance along the cable. This value is usually somewhere between 65 and 90 percent, and can usually be found on the cable data sheet. Note too that the measurement unit can be switched between meters and feet using the settings menu. The CTH provides both the magnitude of the fault in dB, as well as the distance of the fault for one or more faults. Multiple faults are numbered sequentially, ordered by severity. The first fault is the one with the strongest reflection, etc. Note that a low loss open or unconnected cable will reflect almost the full signal power at the open end, and in this case the measurement will display 00, 0 dB and the full cable length. There are also two special messages. No slash matched cable means either that no cable is connected to the CTH, or that the cable has no faults and terminates into a pure 50 ohm load. A matched load absorbs all of the transmitted signal, so there would be no reflections. The other special case is protection, and this means that another source of RF was detected on the cable. In this case, be sure that there are no other sources of RF present on the cable while running the test. When making cable fault measurements, the cable under test is connected to the CTH's antenna connector. After selecting cable fault mode, we first need to configure our maximum cable length and velocity factor, using the up-down arrows to change numeric values. We then select Start Measurement, and the results are displayed automatically. Here we see a fault 29 feet from the CTH antenna connector. The up-down arrows can be used to scroll through any additional faults, if present. The final CTH test mode that we'll look at is over-the-air testing. Over-the-air testing determines the frequency and field strength of a nearby transmitter. It does this using the CTH's built-in antenna, which means no cable connection is required between the CTH and the radio under test. The CTH's internal antenna should be pulled out completely for this measurement. Frequency and field strength are shown by default, with additional test parameters, such as max hold, being configured under the Settings menu. The frequency of the measured signal is given in megahertz, and field strength is shown as a series of bars. These bars represent values between plus 80 and plus 148 dB microvolts per meter, using a linear dB scale. Note that a single bar or an unstable or changing frequency display mean that there is insufficient signal strength for a measurement. In this case, move the CTH closer to the transmitting radio or antenna. 
Two right pointing arrows indicate that max field strength has been exceeded. If max hold was enabled under settings, a less than sign is used to indicate the maximum measured signal strength during the max hold period. We start an over the air measurement by first entering the over the air test mode. The next step is to fully extend the CTH's built in antenna. The frequency and field strength measurements begin automatically. If we key up a nearby transmitter, the CTH measures and displays the frequency and field strength. Again, no cable connection is required. So in summary, the Rodian Schwartz CTH radio test set can be used to verify the function and performance of radios and radio systems using four different test modes. In transmitter test mode, the CTH can measure a transmitter's frequency, forward and reflected power, and the resulting visoire between transmitter and antenna. In receiver test mode, the CTH transmits a signal into the radio under test for verifying things such as sensitivity, squelch, and demodulation. The CTH can also be used as an over-the-air tester for measuring both frequency and field strength by means of its built-in antenna. And finally, cable test mode can be used to determine distance default or cable length in feed lines and antenna systems. This concludes our presentation using the Rodian Schwartz CTH radio test set. Thanks for watching.